introduction and for the opportunity to give here this uh, presentation. In the next couple of minutes, I would like to give you an overview about the latest hardware and software developments at uh, NVIDIA in order to provide you this infinite compute power for uh, deep learning. So let's talk about uh, Okay, let's talk about the importance of uh, deep learning. So deep learning is everywhere. Of course, uh, internet and cloud um, uh, community is pushing this uh, heavily with image classification, speech recognition, language uh, translation, uh, sentiment analysis uh, recommendation, and, and so on. But uh, there are a lot of uh, other fields uh, which are going with uh, deep learning. So, for instance, medicine and uh, biology uh, with a cancer cell detection, uh, diabetic rating, drug discovery, uh, media entertainment, uh, video captioning, uh, video search, real-time transition, but also in the security and defense industry for face detection, video surveillance, satellite imagery, um, and we heard in the previous talk about uh, autonomous uh, machines, autonomous uh, cars. Um, so uh, another proof point for us uh, for the importance of uh, deep learning is uh, the number of organizations NVIDIA is uh, engaged with uh, uh, deep learning. Um, so we see in 2013 we were engaged with around uh, 100 organizations. Um, in 2014 uh, we increased this uh, to more than 1,500 and uh, we more than doubled this in 2015. So more than 3,400 organizations are meanwhile engaged and uh, we see um, big growth in, in uh, this engagement. So if you look uh, to the um, different industries, of course, uh, higher education is uh, heavily engaged uh, with us because they are developing new methods, new approaches um, for this uh, deep learning. Uh, but uh, on the other side, also the industry, uh, internet, uh, cloud industry, life science, uh, finance, media and entertainment, government, manufacturing, defense, automotive, all these are uh, engaged uh, with, with uh, NVIDIA and we are uh, developing uh, new solutions uh, for them. Um, we are uh, requesting feedback uh, in order to improve our uh, products um, so it's a new computing model. It's a new computing paradigm. So in uh, traditional computer vision, we need uh, domain experts which uh, design future detectors. And um, the uh, computer vision experts uh, are needed and a lot of uh, time in order to develop uh, these algorithms. So with the deep, um, um, deep learning, the deep neural networks learn future uh, features from uh, large data sets. Uh, the quality uh, depends on the data and uh, training uh, methods, and uh, we need a lot of uh, data and a lot of uh, compute uh, power. This brings me to the uh, GPUs, uh, to the data center. Um, so we have to distinct between uh, the servers for training in the data center, which scales with the data, and on the other side, we have, to, uh, we have the servers for inference, for instance, web server, which uh, scales with the users. Or other devices are also possible uh, to uh, deploy a trained uh, model, uh, like uh, the embedded devices or special uh, devices like this uh, Drive PX2, which we uh, developed uh, for the autonomous uh, cars. Um, so um, this means um, we need a lot of compute power in order to train uh, the models and uh, then we uh, need uh, the power efficiency and the performance in order to uh, deploy uh, this model. So we are develop developing one GPU architecture with uh, different flavors. So on one side for training, you need high throughput, um, the Tesla M40 is uh, one example, and uh, we announced a couple of uh, weeks ago the newest uh, generation, the Pascal generation, and also we designed a system especially for deep learning 
uh, the so-called DJX1 Pascal, and DJX1 I will explain uh, a little bit later in a minute. And on the other side, uh, we have uh, GPUs, um, for instance, the hyperscale Tesla GPU, the so-called M4, which uh, has a power envelope of only 50 watts instead of uh, 250 or 300 watts for the GPU uh, with the training uh, sessions. Um, then also embedded devices, uh, Jetson TX1, or as I'm already mentioned, the uh, Drive uh, PX2. So, but it's not only hardware, it's about uh, software. And over the last couple of years, we uh, developed a lot of uh, software, especially for this uh, deep learning. So we have a deep learning SDK and software development kit, which uh, contains a lot of uh, libraries, especially, especially for this uh, deep learning. Um, the so-called QDNN library, I will cover in a minute, uh, will provide you primitives to uh, create uh, deep neural networks uh, optimized for the GPUs. Uh, the Kublas library provides you optima optimal matrix uh, calculations, uh, QSparse library for sparse matrix uh, algorithms or uh, methods. Uh, we have an N nickel library, NCCL, um, which uh, provides you an optimal uh, way to communicate uh, between the GPUs inside a system. Uh, and uh, we have this uh, um, GPU inference engine I will also cover uh, later, uh, where you can deploy uh, models in a very efficient way. And on the, uh, to um, um, the button, you see this uh, digits uh, tool. Uh, we developed uh, this uh, graphical user interface in order to manage and monitor um, deep learning uh, training sessions. And uh, meanwhile, this uh, digits tool is an open source, so feel free uh, to uh, further develop uh, this uh, digits, which allows you to process the data, to configure the deep neural networks, to monitor the progress, and also to visualize uh, different uh, layers. I mentioned this uh, QDNN uh, library. Um, it provides you deep learning uh, primitives. And uh, meanwhile, all the frameworks uh, which are available are using this QDNN in order to get an uh, optimal uh, GPU support. So if you look to TensorFlow, Talk, Cafe, CNTK, Tiano, and uh, you name it, um, are using this uh, QDNN library. And um, if you see over the last two years, uh, starting with QDNN version one, uh, we were able to uh, train uh, 20 million images per day. And with uh, hardware and also with software optimizations, uh, we are now able to uh, train more than 80 uh, million, uh, million images uh, per day. So you can develop uh, this, uh, or you can download this QDNN from the uh, NVIDIA website, but uh, most of the deep learning users don't know about uh, the GPU in, in the back. Uh, they are using the frameworks, and the frameworks handle the uh, optimal uh, support for the GPUs with this uh, QDNN library integrated. Um, I mentioned the inference, um, which is uh, very important. So uh, you need high performance for this uh, step and also energy efficiency. Uh, we developed a piece of software, the uh, GPU inference engine. It's a high performance framework, which makes it very easy to uh, develop uh, GPU accelerated inference uh, runtimes. So it's uh, currently an early access. If you uh, want to join this early access uh, program for the inference uh, engine, let, please let us know. Coming to the hardware, I mentioned this uh, P100 Pascal uh, GPU. Um, that's a high-end uh, GPU. Um, we developed this with a new uh, manufacturing technology. 
So we are using um, 16 nanometer manufacturing technology instead of uh, 28 nanometers, which gives us the opportunity to integrate more transistors into the uh, GPU and uh, to uh, be more energy efficient. So one example um, with the Pascal uh, GPU, we have uh, 15 million, uh, billion uh, transistors integrated and with the previous generation, we had around 8 uh, billion transistors in integrated. This means we are able to integrate new hardware uh, features into the uh, GPU. Um, one important also for deep learning is the so-called NVLink technology, which means you have the uh, opportunity to link the GPU inside a system in a much uh, faster way uh, with this NVLink instead of uh, having PCI Express uh, connections. Another point is a new memory technology. So we are using this so-called stacked memory uh, and um, we are able to get around 720 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. With the previous generation, we had around 300 gigabyte per second uh, uh, memory bandwidth. So it's a huge uh, step uh, forward, and especially for deep learning, it's a key win. And um, one also important point is a so-called page migration engine. So we have a unified memory together with the host memory and the GPU memory, and the runtime system handles the data transfers between the uh, GPU and the uh, CPU, So what, which makes it much easier to integrate uh, the um, GPUs into the uh, frameworks. So another very important uh, feature, which uh, P100 is the first Tesla chip, which uh, supports this, is the half precision uh, support. So a lot of uh, deep learning uh, developers are using, meanwhile, half precision, so FP16 instead of uh, single precision, which makes it much more uh, efficient and much more, uh, much faster uh, to, to get uh, results. So we are able to provide uh, more than 20 uh, teraflops uh, of uh, half precision. So the system which is based on this um, 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 Pascal processor is a DGX1. It's an AI supercomputer in a box. So we have uh, two normal uh, Xeon CPUs integrated but um, we have also eight uh, of these uh, Tesla P100 uh, processors integrated, which are connected via this NVLink uh, technology. So there is a very fast way to communicate inside uh, the uh, system between the GPUs. And uh, that's, of course, in important uh, for the uh, training sessions. Uh, very large uh, SSD deep learning cache is uh, needed, um, so seven terabytes, and a lot of uh, interconnect uh, is provided by the system. So you can see the system in the back um, on, on at the NVIDIA booth. If you have questions, uh, please ask. But it's not about uh, the hardware, it's more about the uh, software. So on, on one side, we have a normal Linux operating system with the GPU drivers, uh, with the um, Docker container uh, concept with GPU support, and um, also with the uh, deep learning uh, libraries and, and software I uh, mentioned earlier. On the other side, uh, we have this uh, uh, NVIDIA cloud management service. Um, so we are, as NVIDIA, providing um, the container images for the uh, frameworks in a cloud, and you are able to download and to provision this uh, optimized, uh, GPU optimized container to your uh, system. This means it's very easy to use uh, the system. So five steps to deep learning. You have to register uh, on this uh, service, on this cloud service. You have to log in. 
then you get a uh, monitoring portal where you can see what's happening on your system, so what's happening with the uh, GPU load, with the I.O. load, with the memory consumption, etc. Um, then you are able to choose a um, container, a cafe container or TensorFlow container or other containers uh, from this uh, graphical user interface, and the container will be deployed to your DJX1. And you can use it, you can interact with your jobs, you can create training sessions, so you can create uh, the data sets, or you can choose the models uh, you want, and uh, you can uh, start your training run and can uh, monitor the progress of your training run. So it's very easy to use this uh, with this uh, cloud uh, service, with this container store we are providing at NVIDIA. In summary, NVIDIA is providing hardware and software platform for deep learning. So we are always interested to hear about requirements uh, for training and for inference. And uh, we have uh, this uh, com complete list uh, of deep learning software and uh, hardware. I would also like uh, to, to, um, have the, uh, to, to invite you to the GPU technology conference, which will take place uh, for the first time in, in Europe, uh, in Amsterdam, end of uh, September. So in the US, uh, we had uh, in April more than 6,000 uh, people attending the uh, conference. Uh, we are expecting here in Europe more than uh, 1,000 uh, people, and we will cover different areas like deep learning, AI, uh, supercomputing, HPI, uh, HPC, uh, self-driving cars, virtual reality, and, and so on. So with that, I want to uh, finish uh, my presentation and I'm open for questions. Thank you.